Oh my goodness. It is hot outside. Woo! Oh, so you can actually put these legs down and almost make it like a standard microphone. Hey, how are you? you know, I don't know. I just keep going back to this mic. I have a Shure shotgun mic. It sounds okay, but I don't know. The acoustics in this room is just kind of like... If you don't already know, I'm Drake, the Senior Systems Engineer for ReasonableITService.com. Today I'm going to show you how to set up SMP traps on your endpoint and to be received and processed by your Zabbix server. And as per usual, I'm going to be knocking it out as fast as possible. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is enable SNMP and SNMP traps on our endpoint. In my case, I'm going to be receiving SNMP traps from a Cisco switch. And you may only need to enable SNMP traps on your device and not actually SNMP. In my case, I'm going to be enabling both. If you are using a Cisco switch, well, you're in luck because it's actually quite simple to enable SNMP traps. I'm just going to copy this command, enter global config with config T. Paste that command, SNMP traps have been enabled. However, we do need to point the SNMP over to our Zabbix and you want to specify your community string here. So in my case, I'm just using the default public. Obviously this is just for demonstration, but I recommend something more complex. Bada bing, bada boom. You can do write memory. So it copies the running config to the startup config. Now that's SNMP traps. We also have SNMP in general. And I'm also going to be configuring that because I want to monitor this switch with SNMP as well. For read only, you're going to run this command. For read and write, you're going to run this command. Once again, you want to replace this word with your community string. In my case, it's public. If you do a quick show SNMP, you'll see the SNMP config. Traps are enabled. Target address is my Zabbix server. There's my community string. SNMP is enabled. Community string is public. It's also read only. You now have SNMP traps and SNMP configured and enabled on your Cisco switch. All right, so next up we need to get our Zabbix server going. We need to edit the Zabbix server config. So I'm using Vim to take a look at this config file. What you want to do is find the SNMP section. You can quickly jump down to this by searching keyword. You want to do forward slash SNMP and then hit enter on your keyboard. Then you can do I for insert. And in my case, I'm going to use the temporary path for the Zabbix traps, SNMP trapper file. This will be commented out on your setup and this will be active, this line right here. Then you'll want to turn on your start SNMP trapper. So this will be commented out and also equal to zero. So on comment that, set it to one. Colon, right quit. So next up, we need to install the Zabbix trap receiver script. There's a command here you can use to download it straight from the repository. I was having trouble doing that. So I had to basically manually download it and I stuck the file on my desktop right here. This will also be available for download on the blog. We're gonna use a little trick to simply copy this over to our Zabbix server through Windows with SCP. Here's the command, and we're gonna run this on our Windows machine from the command line. What it's gonna do is copy it over to a temporary directory on our Zabbix server. So adjust these parameters accordingly. You'd wanna put your username here. If you have the file on your desktop, you wanna use your Zabbix username here and specify your Zabbix server IP. So let's go ahead and copy this SCP command. And we're gonna open up another command window. It's gonna ask you for your Zabbix server password. Copied successfully. We need to move it to the correct directory and we're gonna do so sudo move. And we're gonna put that Zabbix trap receiver under user bin, paste it. No news is good news here. It means the command went through. We can double check that by looking in user bin. Let's do a ls and look for pl files. Perl script, great. We do need to set permissions for that Perl script and you can do so with this simple command here. Paste. Permissions are good. 
So we do need to install SNMP Trap D, the SNMP MIBS downloader, it's all rolled into this command. Go ahead and run this and install it accordingly. I already have it. Just to save time in this video, I'm not gonna go through this step, but it's just a standard package install, no big deal. We need to now edit the SNMP Trap D config file. I for insert, we are gonna add two lines. You want to use your community string here. Once again, mine set to public. And we're basically telling SME trap D config to use the Perl script. So let's copy this. I th that looks good. I'm gonna hit escape on my keyboard and then colon WQ for right quit. I almost forgot we do need to install the libs SMP Perl. And the final step of setting up the back end essentially. We've got a little bit more to go on the front end after this though. So now that we've done that, we're just gonna restart the Zabbix server, the service, not the actual server. We're gonna restart the SNMP trap D service as well, and we're good. We can also take a look at those services after the fact. Just to make sure they're running. Great. Active and running. And we're gonna pop in the front end now. I'm in Zabbix 6.4. And what I want to do is create a new host. And I'm just going to add this with an SNMP template. We're going to add an SNMP interface. So this is the IP address of my Cisco switch. Default port 161 is good. What you want to do is put your community string in here. And I can probably just leave that because the default uses public. If we go over to macros and inherited macros, there is a macro and it's set to public. So I don't even need to change that. I'm good there. Everything else looks good. So I'm going to do add on that. So we'll give that a few minutes to become available. In the meantime, once this becomes available, I'm going to kick off an SNMP trap from my actual device to Zabbix. I'm going to trigger that by doing a WR command. Okay, the endpoint is now available. So if I go over to hosts, I click my Cisco switch, and I head over to latest data. There is an SNMP fallback item that we're looking for. So I'm just going to type in for name, SNMP to apply. There's no value. And that's because the Cisco switch has not generated any traps yet. I'm going to do that by running the WR command. By me copying the running config to the startup config that should have generated an SNMP trap. Aha, and check this out. We now have some data. Yay. The copy operation was completed successfully. And if we take a look at that command, ah, look familiar. We can now create an item for this and then create a trigger that looks for this string and we'll send an alert every time somebody runs a WR command on the Cisco switch. Pretty awesome, right? Obviously, you can do this for all kinds of traps and use the string, but that falls outside the scope of this tutorial. Thank you for watching. If that video has helped you out in any way, shape, or form, head over to our Buy Me a Coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash reasonable IT. Leave us a tip. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave it in the comment or leave a comment on the blog and we'll do our best to help you out.